Right, there you go. So we have to do it this way then. All right. So this is the last chapter and one welcome to all of you once again. You are spending so much time. You're spending your financial resources as well as your time. So we'd rather give it our best. We'd rather be catalysts of change first to ourselves, to our family, to the community, and to the whole world. So we've done everything except for this one, which is a person of influence reproduces other influencers. And this is the real revival. The re real revival happens when a real born-again Christian, a real enlightened Christian with the fruits of the Holy Spirit and who's been guided by, by the Holy Spirit of the, of, of the Most High God, reproduces other Christians and reproduces strong Christians who are not only benchmarkers, but Christians Christians who are not only, only relevant, but significant. Because once a person becomes significant, the person starts becoming an agent of change. So we already had agreed that there's so much to do in our Christ, Christ, Christian faith, you know, in this so-called church. So one of those that we need to address is the organized church. The organized church is sometimes very feudal. And um, we ordinary members sometimes uh, feel like we cannot do anything about it because there are a lot of people up there who are still operating under, under the feudal type of leadership. That's why the 21 irrefutable laws and the other one, the other course, which is... Um, Another higher course of leadership will give us some 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 techniques by which uh, we will be able to, you know, if we are on the middle management level or we are on the pastoral level and we are not really on the uh, on the decision making body, we, we those uh, modules will teach us some techniques by which we will be able to uh, influence everyone around us, not only those who are not only our mentees but you know everyone means even those who are superior than we are so that is the beauty of leadership because leadership is um, according to one of the authors leadership is um trying to let the person eat you know this is a little bit a slang you know slang kind of sharing you know, uh, letting a person eat a dung, letting a person eat a dung, and when a person eats your dung, he or she doesn't eat or smell the bad, and he or she doesn't taste the bad, taste the dung. That is, well, the extreme. So a person with influence has a strong fragrance. You know, we have a strong aroma. Can you imagine the aroma of coffee? Every morning when you wake up, ah, you know, it awakens you. That is a person with a person who's able to be around. What we call charismatic. So a person of leadership uses other influence. You know, some of your elders in church might also need you to influence them. You might not Excuse even me. know. Can everyone on, uh, mute their own? Let every person put his or her own on mute so that we will hear it, please. Yeah, please mute. Everybody, please mute yourselves. You might not even know that you are already influencing your bosses or your bishops and an archbishops. Just be the change you want to see in this world and let your sparkle shine and uh so people will see you um there's nothing impossible with god there's nothing impossible with god so um you can do it i believe in you and i believe in the power of god in each one of you so yeah a person of influence reproduces other influencers so for all you know you know, if your bishop, archbishop, whoever is superior is not yet an influencer, uh, 
build good relationship, make friends with them, show them that you're different so that they will see your light and they will follow you. They will follow you if they if they really see you shine. So, you know, this is, well, hold on. I think we need to make it bigger like that. All right. So, you know, um, multiplying or real revival in church must actually happen like networking. You think like networking only happened in the 21st century? No. <laughs> or during the biblical times, they also know what networking is all about. Even Jesus knew what networking is all about. Um, the multi-level marketing, that's it. You know, Paul started to mentor Timothy, Titus, and Epaphras. And then these three people started to mentor other people. And then other people started other people. That's just what it has to be. And the chain must not stop. Um, that's why we need to mentor really strong people. Like what we've discussed yesterday, we need to mentor people who we believe really has strong leadership potential so that our chain of recruitment, recruitment will not stop. That's it. There's no end to this multiplication. So the power of multiplication is that reduce reproducing leaders raise your influence to a new level. This this is your benefit if you reproduce. Reproducing leaders raise your influence to a new level. Reproducing leaders multiplies resources. Reproducing leaders ensures a positive future for your organization. In our case, for our church, our church will have positive future. Reproducing leaders raises the new leader's personal potential. So that is very important. Personal potential. Reproducing leaders raises the new leader's personal potential. So once again, reproducing leaders, ra reproducing readers, leaders raised your influence to a new level. Yeah, because when you... When you when you multiply exponentially, then God's kingdom is multiplied exponentially. Your reward in heaven will be higher than those who did not help any soul on earth. Uh, but 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 always remember that our salvation, you know that <laughs> our salvation does not depend on our work because we are saved not by good works. But then now nah, we're just really working for our reward for our crowns in heaven. So reproducing leaders raise your influence to a new level as well as your crown in heaven. You know, uh, how close you, your house will become in the throne of heaven. Um, so that, that's it. Now, now again, we are multiplying not because we want to build an empire for ourselves, but because we want to make, to build an empire for Jesus, for God. So reproducing yourself on a practical level you know, on the practical level, reproducing yourself to 4,000 times, 5,000 times, you know, um, makes you more powerful because your influence has more impact to a multitude of people. Now, let's go to business. The more connections they have, you have, it's easier for you to get clients. That's it. That's why some, pe some people are doing uh, marketplace ministry and at the same time uh, doing the church ministry. And it's not really bad to use a church network for business as long as we do it with integrity and for as long as people are benefiting from it. Uh, so as long as it's not a scam, then yes, it's good if everyone is benefiting from it. So reproducing yourself, you know, reproducing your influence goes to uh, the next level because you know, if you train them the best kind of leadership, then, you know, as you push them, they push you. It's actually just us, uh, us uh, you know, like when we push others, people push us from below and we just push each other up, pushing each other up, pushing each other up, you know, so everyone goes up, not the other way around, not, not pushing, uh, not, not pulling people down, not pulling people down, not the crab mentality. When you see a church, with a crab mentality, try to be the diff try to make a difference. But if you cannot make a difference, get out of the church. Um, this is one thing that I need to, 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 to tell people, especially those who are geniuses or really gifted. 
if your pastor, if your pastor or your bishop or an archbishop doesn't really make you grow, does not celebrate your potentials and it stunts you, it makes you spiritually bonsai, um, your, your boss or your office or your church does not develop you, does not tap your potentials, ask God, you know, what would he like you to do? Because definitely God would like you to grow. Or sometimes God would like you to be in a place where you cannot grow because he'd like you to grow in other areas yet. So I really don't know where uh, where you're at right now. But if you really feel like, you know, sometimes you already been choked and you cannot breathe anymore, then you see life is just like a naughty loss. I, I wrote this in my book, uh, From Passion to Profit, My Love Affair with Pentium 4. Life is like a nautilus. It's like a nautilus. It's like a shell. We move from one chamber to another. Now, if if in the chamber where you are now, because you know a shell, this this uh shell shellfish grows inside this nautilus. So once you cannot anymore breathe in that chamber, it must be a sign that you need to move to the next chamber in order for you to multiply. Yes. So if you're not multiplying there, you're being choked. Um, you're just uh, stagnated in one chamber. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Because, again, it might, might be time for you to step out of the church, um, go to another church where you can be more celebrated and your talent be used and you can multiply. Because don't waste your time with people who, who have got crab mentality. You cannot change people. You can only change yourself and your situation. They cannot change your situation. You can only change your situation. So you, you look for the right place for you under the sun. Okay. Now, reproducing leaders multiplies resources. Yeah, when you multiply people, you multiply your resources. That's why people would like to have mega churches because they'll have big tithes. There's no problem with big tithings for as long as you use, you know, you know, you you have a mega church, fine. Uh, for as long as you use it for the glory of God. If you've got a mansion, fine. As long as you share, you know, as long as you share, th that, that's fine. And for as long as your your blessings as long as your bless you don't as long as your blessings don't make you bitter because some blessings becomes curse if our blessings overtake us so be 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 careful with your blessings now reproducing leaders ensures a positive future for your organization yes there are a lot of churches who just died because they're they're not producing they're not training pastors i know of one church in wheelchair um, they kicked out the pastor because it's a Baptist church. They kicked out the pastor because uh, I think their pastor became charismatic. I don't know what. I don't know the real story. They kicked out, but the, the, they, that pastor did not train another pastor in the organization. So when they kicked out the pastor, uh, they I I don't know maybe for about a year they just kept on hiring you know pastor here and there temporary pastor for the church. That's sad because no one was, no one just took over. There was no associate pastor. There's no assistant pastor. Um, there, there was no, there was just a church and co the congregation who were just bench, uh, you know, they're just there, just bench uh, warmers. There's a pastor and got done. So it's very sad. Now, it is good if you own a church. I mean, you know, God assigned you to be a pastor of a church and you're reproducing leaders. You have to ensure a positive future for your organization. Now, if you have, um, 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 I, that, that's why in my case, my business was what well, well, used to be uh, teaching English. And I used to have a lot of teachers, but I made a mistake. So it just closed down. This is a new company. Uh, but now I've learned a lot. I've learned my lesson. So this is my new company. What my plan is to empower people to teach leadership, not only me, but I cannot empower people who just took one course. So uh, um, I, I want everybody to be taking up the six courses and then come over to the UK for the certification. I, I go there for the certification program. And then I, I would like everybody to do the public speaking like this, training people. 
I, I'd like to partner with institutions in Nigeria, uh, all, all over the world, so that everybody can do leadership training this way, this kind of leadership. So that there's, we can be, I, I cannot do, I mean, you know, my mission is so big. That's why now I registered at the Global Compact because I also would like to influence the CEOs. Global Compact, there are SMEs there, there are big companies. I also would like to penetrate that. So not only churches, we would like to change, you know, wherever we go. We would like, we want change, change, change. So, you know, I would just like to pour out what I have because we don't know how long God would like us to live in this earth. So now I'm, uh, I'd like to pour down. So this is what uh, I was telling Reverend Hagai. I, you know, I said, you know, Reverend Hagai, this is just our plan now. You know, let them finish all the courses. I will keep recruiting for people to pay higher, uh, so that we still can subsidize the tuition fee, and then let them finish six courses. And let's not disband. Let's have one meeting. You know, and. Uh, let's make sure that everything changes because uh, we're not just doing this for money because money is secondary. We want, and then we would like to write books with you. Um, so when you be certified by UK School of Leadership, you will be carrying the brand of UK School Leadership and so on and so forth. So we don't know how far we can go, but I'm sure we can go farther because I cannot do this by myself. But then again, I, I, you know, that's why I want to see people face to face, eye to eye before they, before I like to give them the certification. So it's either, um, I think August of next year, we are planning for global certification. People come over and join us here for a certification program, further three, uh, three days training. And then, uh, well, of course, you know, we can have fellowship, uh, fellowship, we can have some team building by going around uh, maybe two days of team building going around the beauty, uh, the historic places here. There's a bus that we can hire. Uh, we can do picnic uh, in some of the parks here. We can do fishing, you, you know, or, or well, I, I know some team building stuff. So, or if not, you know, um, I can go there. Yeah, let's pray about it. Because, you know, reproducing leaders ensures positive future for your organization. It's going to allow us to conquer more territories if I will multiply myself. So I wish to multiply myself for, you know, in you, in each one of you. And then, okay, reproducing leaders raises the new leader's personal potential. Yes, um, that's why I'm so happy that you're so receptive. You're coming on time. You're listening to the lectures. Um, you're following through. We have good rapport with each other. Um, you like me. I like you. And this is really a very good team. <laughs> so I'm, I'm so happy. And I said, wow, this is really an ideal team. You know, and I said, oh, we're having fun. Because fun factor is also a big factor in uh, reproducing yourself. There has to be fun, fun factor. That's what you call fun factor. I think I think in one of those courses, uh, high, high level courses, fun is one of those factors that would make you grow as well. You know, humor and something like that. So then um, let's go to the next page, which is awaken the reproducer in you, okay? So how do you awaken yourself? You have to lead yourself well. The very difficult person to be led is you. It's you. You. And then look continually for potential leaders and put the team first. Okay? And you last. This is agape love. So lead yourself well. Um, yeah, like what we've said, and I'm just going to reiterate it. And you actually also... Um, resonated with the idea that the best person who can rate you if you are really leading yourself well is your wife or your husband. Uh, yes, I have to confess with you. Sometimes when I'm teaching and my husband overhears what I'm saying, after I teach, he will tell me, you know what? You have to practice what you preach, you know? <laughs> All right. Or sometimes when I hear him coach people, I also tell him, you know what? You have to practice what you preach to me. You have to be kind to me. I'm your neighbor. I'm your very first neighbor. He tells me that he, 
you know, I tell him that, but, you know, glory to God, we don't, you know, a, a little offense, but after a minute or two, we, we apologize and say, sorry if I say it harshly, but it's a truth. Well, anyways, <laughs> yeah, mm, you might be hurt, you know, our spouses and you, sometimes you can be harsh and you can be very frank with your, with your spouses, but they're really the ones who can smell our bad breath, yeah? <laughs> when you wake up, who smells your bad breath first? Your spouse. So um, if you don't have a spouse, at least your children. If you don't have children, at least people who are close to you. Lead yourself well. And it's really good to ask for feedback, especially from people who live with us. And then next, look continually to, to for potential leaders. Look for potential leaders. Look around, look around, look around. You just don't make them members, members. You know, ask them, ask around, ask around, and then mentor them. When you mentor them, you have to encourage them to multiply as well. And then, you know, put your the team first. Put the team first. And then, okay, so these are seven questions for a successful team orientation. Do I add value to others? Always remember, do I, did I add value to my team? Did I add value to my wife? Did I add value to my children? Did I add value to my office mates, to my church members, to my friends, to my colleagues? Do I add value to the organization? Am I quick to give away the credit when things go right? Is our team consistently adding new members? Are we adding new members or are we regressing? Um, I appreciate some of the cults. These are not even Christian churches. The cults, some of the cults, you know, these fake churches, uh, the cultic churches, they, they grow so fast because they encourage their members really to bring, you know, bring along people with them. They grow so fast. So, yeah, why can't we do it? Encourage them, you know, like put a check mark, like how many people have they brought in to church or to the office or if you you have something like that yeah membership and then train them for quality spirituality now is our team consistently adding new members do i use my bench players as much as i could this is what i'm saying bench players are you using your bench players or are they just bench players for life there should be no bench players for life if you are if, if one member has been attending for six months on the seven month, give them a little bit of a responsibility, assign them to someone to, to be trained, to be mentored. So that, you know, a year after, they'll be productive, they'll be contributing something, they'll be developing their talents. Next, do many people on, my, on the team consistently make important decisions? Yes, this is it. So the pastors just don't make decisions the CEO just don't make decisions. Um, the, well, I'm, uh, well, it, you know, it's my partnership with different with with Reverend Haggai. I really don't tell him what to do. Uh, we we talk and then we agree and then I just tell him it's up to you. Uh, it's up to you. It's up to you. Uh, this is it. That's your part. It's up to you. Uh, well, there are other partners who would tell me, like, can you train me on this? I need to train this. Then I said, okay, I'll train you. I don't want to do it again <laughs> because I want people to be smart and to be to be on their toes because I'd like them to know that time is important. You know, the element of time is important. So please be on your toes, record what I'm going to, to tell you, and then just do the same, pass it on pass it on you know i like singaporeans you know the singaporeans they're so exact they have this um a training of being exact of being um of being excellent in what they do they're not wishy-washy and look at their country it's so progressive and it's the same way with south america i mean south uh, south koreans you know uh, the most powerful passports now are the three most powerful passports in the world are in Asia. Number one, Japan is, I think, on the number one. Japan and then um, I think South Korea and Japan. 
and Singapore are either one or two, but I'm sure Singapore was number one. UK and US, um, I think, are only number six now. They've been overtaken by by these Asian countries because these Asian countries, these Asian countries have worked so hard to empower themselves, and now they are multiplying. Um, the the prime minister here is an Asian. I mean, Asian descent. Uh, the the one a very strong contender, a thirty seven year old contender for American presidency candidate of the Republican is uh, Rom Romaswari is also from an Asian descent. So uh, what is very good with Asians is that they train their children to become leaders and they train their children to be independent. Um, so do that please in your churches, do that in your family as well. And do that to everybody because in your churches, no bench players as much as you could. No bench players. Drive them to work, you know, let them work, let them be productive. Um, encourage them. If you see talented people, you encourage them to write books, to write poem, poem, poems. Um, uh, encourage them to do, encourage people to bake, encourage them, whatever it is that you can encourage them to do. And, 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 Apply and active encourage them. Number six, do many people on the team consistently make important decisions? This is the most important thing. You have to encourage everyone to help you make decisions. You know, you don't make decisions for them. Just give them some orientations and then let them go like, all right, it's up to you. In other words, you know, in some universities right now, they're giving academic freedom to teachers and to the college deans. So, uh, Reverend Ayuba, I think you're not you're not uh, you're not muted. Please mute yourself, please. Uh, all right, please mute yourself. All right. So, um, wait, hold on. All right. So, seven seven questions for a successful team. We are here already. So. You just don't make, even in your houses, in your respective houses, don't make decisions. Let your children make their own decisions sometimes. Just give them an orientation, show them how it is, and then let them decide for themselves because it is very important. Decision-making is a skill that leaders must really have. So you have to train everyone to do decision-making. Next, is your team. Um, is your team's emphasis on creating victories more than creating stars? Ah, uh ah. -uh. Yes, creating victories more than creating stars. The reason why I, th this was what exactly what I was telling that man, I think from Abuja this afternoon, because I think he was expecting to have crusades there and crusades here and making superstars of people in this organization. And then I told him, no, we are low profile. We don't even want big crusades, except if we want them in, Churches, you know, we want to go from one churches, but we what do we want now? We want real change from each one of us, and then number two, change in the family, and then change in the community. I mean, in the in churches, and then change in the community. I said we might not see the change in a day, but we don't want to celebritize anyone here. We want this low profile, but make sure we are doing this. Um. Uh, that's th that's why we have your you have your workbooks with you. So if your team's emphasis on creating victories more than creating stars, victory, 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 victory. Don't you know this 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 past these pastors of like crusade there and crusade there, posting their images, they're posting their images there here and there. Oh, I'm here, and I was thinking like, all right. Then what change are you doing? Can, can are you really changing lives? Ah. Uh. Oh, my battery's running low. Whoa. Oh, hold on. Oh, oh, dear. hold on. Hold on. Hold on, please. Yes. Oh, okay.
There you go. All right, I got it. Got it. Thank you so much. All right. So is your team's emphasis on creating victories more than creating stars? Don't create stars. Let God promote people. If God would like that person to be a star, yes. But you, you know, most important thing here is we see change. We see change in everyone. Victory in self. Victory in self. So graph about the fruits of the spirit. And, 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 and for example, a person's weakness is, let's say, anger. At least this person must have a personal victory from anger. Another is dishonesty, lying. You know, these little nitty gritty things let people create victorious lives more than creating stars. Because, you know, creating stars sometimes it's hollow, so hollow. Look at these pastors going around. I prophesy to you. I prophesy to you. I prophesy to you. Sometimes when I look at the pastor, I tell him, please prophesy to you and to your family. Yes, I tell him straight to his face. Please prophesy to you and to your family. Because I can discern. I said, what is your motive in prophesying to me? I don't even know you. You're a stranger and you're sending to me prophecies. I said, that's ignorance of influence. How can you influence me? I don't even know you. You know? Yeah. If it, No one is like that here. These are a group of educated people. But on WhatsApp, oh my goodness. I have to delete maybe 150 prophecies in a day. And I was thinking, these people are wasting their time. They're sending prophecies and prophecies and prophecies. I said to everyone, I said, don't they know that no one will read that because because no one knows them they're just spamming people and i tell them sometimes it's true that um the reverend um with all due respect <laughs> i said with all due respect i really follow prophets that i know i really don't know you and how are you why are you prophesying to me you don't know me and i don't know you and I'm even afraid of listening to your prophecies. Yes, because some people are prophets of Baal. <laughs> I, I tell them that. I said, please stop spamming me. Because it's a spam. It's just a spam. And then they, they post to you. I'm going here. I'm going there. I have crusade here. Crusade there. And then I, I, so how many people have you changed now, Reverend? You've got a lot of crusades. How many people have you changed? How many lives have you changed? Oh, no, the gymnasium was full. All right. Did they accept Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior? Did you change your lives? How do you make a follow-up on those uh, people who went to your gymnasium, to mean to the Coliseum? In Spanish, they say, nada. So we don't do that. That's what I was telling and explaining to this uh, Reverend. I says, I'm sorry. If if your if your motive is to to be a star, to become a star, uh, to be a part of us because you want to be a star, no, we're not gonna do that. We can do maybe a yearly a yearly get together among our leaders, but we're not you know get together like John Maxwell. We do have yearly get together, but have you seen John Maxwell members doing crusade? No. It's low profile kind of thing. Do, do you see John Maxwell doing crusades? No, but look at his impact. Great. Because he, he is very wise. It's a low profile. And he's training trainers, training trainers. The best way to impact the world is to train trainers. Not crusade, crusade. Empowering people. Changing their lives. That's it. So we're not creating stars. We are creating change. We are creating changed lives. So the job of a leader today is not to create followers. It's to create more leaders. So if you're a top-notch, if you're a top-notch leader, you know that you are. Because you already made big leaders. So among you, who among you here, um, who among you here have um, trained at least Raise your hands. One leader. One leader in your in your um in, in your leadership. How among you here had oh one. All right, great. Who else? 
only one person had trained one leader. All right. How many had trained from one to ten? Between one and ten. One and ten. Apostle Ruben, uh, um, uh, Professor John, Reverend Francis, one to ten. Okay, Reverend Ayuba. Nothing else. All right. Um, oh, among you here had trained from uh, eleven to twenty. 11 to 20. 11 to 20. Oh, still uh, Apostle Rubin, Reverend. Oh, okay, great. Oh, yeah, okay. So how about the others? Have you not trained anyone yet? <laughs> so sorry. Trained? Yes. I was using my laptop, so I couldn't even raise my hand. Oh, I see. Also, you also did. Yeah, you already had trained a lot. You told us yesterday. All right. Okay. So the influence checklist here. Develop your own leadership potential. Find people with leadership potential. Teach the person to be a leader, not just perform tasks. Ah, what what does this mean? Don't enslave anyone in your organization. When you see a person in your organization, you should always think of making that person a leader. You don't just tell them to do what you want them to do. Teach the person to be a leader, not just perform tasks. Which, in other words, empower them, don't delegate. Empower, don't delegate. No, don't just let them perform tasks. Like This is what I want you to do, huh? Okay? You supervise these people. Here's a checklist. You obey me, huh? okay? All right, no empower them teach them how to lead teach them what Te teach them and then multiply multiply is very important multiplication is very important okay so moving from maintenance to multiplication Okay, so you have to scramble. Sometimes you need to scramble, you know, what you call scramble your your organization in order for your organization to survive. Sometimes you need to siphon, siphon everybody so that you can you can achieve a synergy or synergy. And when you achieve synergy, you can the the entire team can achieve significance. So again. Moving from maintenance to multiplication, because sometimes, you know, you, you're just maintaining. It's just the same thing. 20, 20 people, 20 people. Hey, now you have to start to scramble, 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 scramble. What do you mean by scramble? You need to kick them out? No. We need to see where you need to put them. You know, even if, um, uh, reorganize, in other words, in, even in Congress, even in government, they do this. They scramble their cabinet members, you know, they reshuffle, you know, and then um, so that you can survive. Now, when you're surviving, siphon them again, siphon, siphon, you know, siphon them. And then so there, when you have siphoned them, make, make sure that your siphoning can cause synergy. Because if you are synergetic among yourselves, then you become significant. You're marching on to significance. Now, how to raise up leaders who reproduce leaders? Uh-uh, all right. I'm sure you are. You know, a lot of you here are really people of integrity. So I'll be very, um, I'll be very brief. Um, in fact, just read this. You know, modeling integrity with everybody. Everybody, everybody. Um, nurturing the people in your life that they feel valued. They should feel valued. Showing faith in others so that they believe in themselves. Um, listening to them so that they can build relationship with them. Understanding them so that you can help them achieve their dreams. Enlarging them so that they can increase their potential. Yeah, well, these, these are just reviews, actually, of what we've taken up, up since day one. Navigating them through life's difficulties until they can do it themselves. Number eight, connecting with them so that you can move them to a higher level, empowering them to become the person they were created to be, 
reproducing other leaders so that influence continues to grow through others. So, so these 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 are the yeah th this is a checklist. Um, uh, this is in your workbook. So yeah, just um, open your workbook. This is on the tenth unit. All right. So that's it. We're done for today. <laughs> We're done for today. Now let's go to sharing. This time, anyone would like to share. Anyone, anything that you would like to take a, take away that that the the real takeaway of this seminar from day one until today, and what do you intend really to change in your life? I I'll start uh, <laughs> with my experience today. I'd like to really become more patient. Yes. <laughs> I'd like to become more patient. Uh, this is one of those that I like to develop and uh, to develop some more in my life. So who would like to share with us your your takeaways um, from this seminar and what are the changes you, that you would like to do or adjustments or scrambles or siphoning that you'd like to do? in order for your church to not only survive, but thrive and multiply exponentially and and uh, cause real revival in the world for the kingdom of God. All right. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Aquara Ruth, please. Go ahead. Aquara. Yes, go ahead, Aquara. You raise your hand, yeah. Yeah, you unmute, please. Unmute, mm -hmm. unmute. Yeah. There you go. All unmute? Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, we can hear you already, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for these lessons I've learned. The take home I will like to take is like to doing We can't hear you. Things different. I am and what people will say as a little eyes in so many things that I'm pressing on towards it. And it will it gives me a, a future plan towards that. And then again, uh having a discussions like setting goals. These setting goals, we used to do it in such a way that the I we used to take it as a group, but it opened my mind that I should now look at whoever has the capability to bring the goal. Then I will not look at will not look at the importance of the capability of that person. Then the person will now set the goal towards that, and it has encouraged me in this. Mm. And then. I would have not been much wisdom or much knowledge that I've gained in such a way that as a leader, as a navigator, there are points that I need to digest just to connect with mm -hmm. people and to expand what in my hand. Thank you. Not just because it's Chris saying it. I just think that in every in every tackle, you can probably find a moment where if you find a freeze frame, it doesn't look great. That's what contact is and, and, and coming together. Uh, all right. Um, I'm I'm just reading through. Um, Reverend Haggai said that uh, uh, someone died in his church, so he went on a funeral service. So that's why he wasn't yeah. able to join. Yeah. Okay. Understand. He is a uh, is a pastor. Yeah. Oh yeah, he already posted on our classroom. John Maxwell Leadership National Executives. Uh, let me read it. I think it's in our chat room. National Coordinator Professor Abidan David Lautor. National Chairman Professor David Dunji Joel. National Secretary Ambassador Adunke Olatunji. 
the John Maxwell Leadership State Coordinators, State Coordinator, Reverend Beatrice Haruna, Secretary. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, where, where was Ruth? Ruth, are you still there? Yes. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I got distracted with, with Reverend Haggai because you know what? He promised that he that we're already like um, almost done with, well, we still have an hour for our sharing, but he actually promised me that he will be, be, be coming over. And before the sharing starts, he has to, he has to announce, you know, his plans to all of us. You see, that's what I am when I leave. You see, you know, I allow him. You know, you know, you know these people, so do it. You know, you know these people, so you know, it, it, it's up to you. Um, he didn't also even ask me. I'm, I'm not offended because I trust him. <laughs> but anyways, go ahead, Mama Ruth, sister. Go ahead, please. What, what, what I was trying to say is the lesson that I've learned especially in goal setting is mm -hmm. that i've come to i've come to learn mm -hmm. that in goal setting i will now look at individual capability mm -hmm. yeah ma'am uh, ruth we have a page for that right yesterday we we had that kind of page capabilities you have to write down the names their skills, their desire, their interest, their passion. I think we took that up yesterday. You're right. We can't hear you anymore. Hello? Ruth, we can't hear you anymore. Hi. Ruth, we can't hear you. Where's she now? Oh, there yes. you go. All right. We can't hear you. Now we can hear you again. Okay. Okay. And being point again is apart from the, that uh, point that I've come every individual that you will now grab you will now not choose someone and that everybody can be nurtured and everybody can be loved. So once you love, you know that person, you nurture it, it is going to bring out something good in that person. There are others that you think may not serve right, even in an organization or in your program you are leading. But this, this course opens my eyes to see that there are levels you can now flow when you see the good in that person. Mm. And the dedication, again, according to the goal of any organization, once it is not set, once the leader does not navigate, mm. definitely the people will be blunt. And mm. your, the people you are carrying may mm. not understand actually where you are heading to. So once yeah. you are ahead of, definitely. You're so right there. Yeah, you're right. I have to remove my camera because it's eating a little bit of a bandwidth. And like what I've told you, it's raining here and we live in a mountain. So our internet connection is just like the same as yours. All right. Okay, so yes. Oh, thank you. You know, I'm so happy that you've learned that. Um, but you're an executive woman. Have you not learned that before? Ruth? Hello. Yeah, you're an executive. Um, have you not learned that before? Hello. Yes. You're an executive. How did you not learn that before? I've discovered, yeah. Thank you so much. I'm so happy. Glory to God. 
you know, as teachers, who among you here are gifted with the teaching? How many you here are, are, are gifted with a, um, the gift of teaching? I mean, assigned by God to be teachers. You, you know that you are assigned by God to be a teacher because your satisfaction lies on people. You, 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 you feel satisfied if you know that the people you're teaching are learning. And that gives you so much joy, immense joy. You know, how long you here feels immense joy when people you're training are learning. Oh, yeah, Dr. Yako. Yeah, yeah, you're a teacher indeed. Okay. So, yeah, now let's go to the next share. Thank you for sharing. It's so much of an encouragement to us, to all of us. Um, yes, Dr. Yako, Dauda Yako, are you raising your hand? Dauda Yako. Connecting with Yolanda. Okay, who else would like to speak? I think Dauda isn't, he was raising, but no, not anymore. All right, who else would like to speak? We actually have an hour to speak, so every one of you will have a chance to speak. Don't leave, you know. <laughs> it's like sort of a fellowship. Hello? Hello? Yes. Who is speaking? Andrew is speaking. Hello? Hello, Andrew. Who is speaking, please? There's Andrew. Andrew, all right, Andrew. All right, next is Technopop. Okay, after Andrew, Technopop. All right, Andrew, please. Uh, yeah, I, I want to really appreciate God for the rounding up today. It's very powerful, so catching and memorable. But my, personally, my gift, I discovered my gift to be a gift of encouragement. But to the perspective to which I have learned through this very course, I remember when we talk about Navigator Max course corrections and where he helped others not to get discouraged, not to listen to doubting critics, and not to get overwhelmed by challenges. I want to promise myself through the seminar what I learned. Sometimes the temptation is for me to be so concerned about myself but with what I have learned, I need to encourage people the more. Hello? We are here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The perspective I have learned, an encourager does not look inward, but an encourager looks outward, how he can help others to be strengthened in whichever situation they find themselves, especially in hard and difficult situations and conditions. I remember the story of Paul when they were going to Rome and they were in the ship and there was problem in the ship. All the people were afraid, thinking they will die in the ship. They couldn't even eat food. But Paul went to them and told them, that an angel of the Lord appeared to me. He has encouraged me. No soul is going to die. Even though we are going to suffer loss of properties, but lives God is going to save. You see, as an encourager, I see Paul there as an encourager. He did not look at himself, but try to encourage people so that they will have confidence to be able to trust in God. And in fact, it is a perspective that he was even giving them now. Those who did not even know God, with what Paul is saying, I mean, it will encourage them to try to understand this God. And when it finally happened, they had a shipwreck, but lives were not lost. Mm -hmm. Then it confirmed to them that indeed, God has spoken to me. So I'm taking the challenge to see how I can encourage my members, to encourage people around me, so that I will not look inward to myself, maybe trying to seek people to encourage me, since this is a gift God has given me. I think I need to use it very well in encouraging others. So I'm taking this one as my take home from what I have learned through this seminar plus many other things, but this one I see it leading in my heart. 
to do it. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much for that sharing. It's so encouraging. As again, I said, as a teacher, it gives a teacher so much joy, immense joy when uh, he or she knows that her students or his students are have, have been touched by what he or she had sh shared. Thank you so much, um, Brother Andrew. Now let's uh, uh, listen to Technopop. <laughs> I'm sorry, because your name is Technopop there, so yeah. Go ahead, please. Okay, uh, I want to first of all start by by thanking God for, for allowing me to be part of this seminar. I also want to appreciate you for most especially availing yourself for studying hard, you know, in order to, to, to fit us with most of the things that we do not know. Uh, as a young person, uh, I was privileged, most especially to, to be part of the teachings. For me, the teachings are very impactful because the teaching helped me to discover myself and it also helped me to look through what my mentor, you know, was doing in my life. Because uh, I, I come to discover that uh, I and my mentor, we are actually part of the group. I was the person that my name was mentioned. That is Pastor Panshak. And then the mentor is Reverend Joshua Aku. I discovered that most of the things taught during the teachings are so practical in my life because there are some of the things that he's trying to put in me. So for me, I, I actually count it a privilege. One of the things that I learned most, especially through the teaching, is for me to be positive, you know, for me to discover myself, and then for me to also navigate uh, for, for others. If I discover myself as a leader, it will help me also to discover, you know, other people. So for me, that actually stood out for me. The teaching is very, very, very interesting because I'm just starting my ministry now. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, uh, yeah, it, it is actually something that I can I can make use of it, and then it is so helpful. I'm just praying that God will help me to apply it, you know, just as of heart. Uh, I just pray for you that God will continue to bless you and bless your ministry and help us so that family, we, please pray. <laughs> you know, to to learn better and further. Thank you so very much. I'm really grateful because it helps me to see myself better. Amen. Thank yes. you so much. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Okay, who's next? All right, Brother John. Brother John, you're um, a genius. Thank you, uh, Sister Angela. Thank you for another day of uh, great stuff. Mm. I want to say that, uh, again, I keep saying, I am personally touched by your, your, your deep sense of, of humility and spiritual consciousness. I am challenged by listening to you. And I just want to encourage you to keep that up. And uh, oh, yeah. I also hope that uh, I will be able to apply that sense of humility in my life. Some of the takes away, some of the takeaway for me in this seminar uh, include um, the skills of listening. I, 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 have, I have been struggling with the problem of listening to people. Sometimes I can be presumptuous. Sometimes I can, I, 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 can as, I will assume that I, I, I know what somebody is thinking or saying. But I, through this seminar, I have come to realize that listening to people requires great skills. And I am taking it upon myself to to, to pay closer attention, to give people listening ears and to apply some of the skills that you have taught in this seminar. Uh, again, another powerful point that stands out for me, as I mentioned yesterday, 
is that all this while, I thought that delegation is the best way to raise leaders. But now I understand better that empowerment is the best way to go. I can't forget that. I, I, I trust God to give me the grace to empower people. Another point that stands out for me in this seminar is has to do with the aspect of navigation that a leader must learn how to navigate uh, the course. That is a very strong point for me. Uh, just as you are about rounding up uh, today, a powerful statement again stands out for me that the job of the leader is not to create followers, but to create more leaders. You know, as a pastor, sometimes if you are in a church where you have a large congregation, 500, 600, 700, one is tempted to think that you are doing well. But mm. I'm coming to realize that one could have a large followers, followership, mm. but your impact would be very limited because if mm. you're not raising leaders, Mm. And then you are you are just on the periphery. Yeah. And that Survival. is yes. Survival. <laughs> yes. And then finally, I would say that today I have come to realize that to be a person of influence and to raise other leaders requires a deliberate and conscious effort. Uh, sometimes as a pastor, again, you are in the midst of a large congregation of people and one may just assume that you are leading people well. But I come to understand from this seminar today that I need to take conscious effort, practical effort with goal setting and be deliberate about the people I am I, I, I want to reach out and raise as leaders so that I don't get lost in the midst of a crowd and then assume that I am doing the right thing. And raising leaders has greater and lasting impact than just uh, gathering a crowd around you. A crowd may, just, may not last, but when you are raising leaders consciously and deliberately, you are going to have a lasting influence and impact in the next generation. Amen. And this is powerful for me. So I am taking up the challenge that I need to be more conscious and deliberate in my effort to, 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 to spot potential leaders in the midst of a crowd mm. and to practically take steps to be able to encourage them and build them and empower them until they get to their, you know, to, to a strong footing. So mm -hmm. these are some of the takeaways for me. Uh, again, Sister Angela, thank you for the great stuff you have delivered from this uh, five-day seminar. It's glory been to God. And inspiring. Only thank God you. be glorified. Only God be glorified. Thank you, God. Glory to God. Only to God. Thank you. You're a genius, actually. Uh, um, you have to you have to increase some more because I think you only had given about five percent of your genius to you know you had poured out about five percent only of yourself. You had not yet maximized the ninety five percent. I think that's how I feel about you. Uh, I'm not saying I'm a prophet, but uh, when I well, every time I run seminars or webinars i always give comments random comments to people and then after a year or two they come back to me and they go like yeah you're right you know now i'm like this in one of those seminars that i ran uh it was a seminar for politicians i like to run seminars for politicians because <laughs> i wanted them to lead well so 
um, I, uh, there was a counselor, just a counselor. And then I told him, you know what? I said, you're, you're called not just to be a counselor. I think you are called, you know, for, a, for, for higher positions in the government. But don't change your heart because he was very radical and righteous. Um, but four years after, uh, he chatted with me. I think he's in one of my profiles and he said, Mom, he said, <laughs> you know, he said, Mom, you know what? I'm a governor now. <laughs> yeah. So remember what I tell you. I'm not saying I'm a prophet, but yeah, there are many people that I already had, you know, let's say prophesy or had just my discernment about them and I found out that my discernments were real. So yeah, um I tell you once again, Reverend Adang, you're you just have given five percent of yourself. You need to give ninety five percent more because there's some more that we can we can we can uh, pull out from you. You hadn't pulled out anything yet. I received the prophecy, Angela. I hope I'm a prophet. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I, I really don't want to. You know, I, I, I'm sorry. Let me. Let me. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So then I'm. I. I, I would like to. Okay. I, I really like you all to join the next training and uh, to finish all this and uh, cause a ripple of revival first, you know, like what I've said. Um, I met Reverend Haggai in a group before. Um, there was this, uh, well, someone, I don't want, you know, to say any negative things about somebody, but, you know, I was new in, a, you know, in, in a, I mean, new in um, implementing this program in Africa. So I was introduced to a certain archbishop. And uh, you see, when you say archbishop, you will not think of anything else but a uh, humble person, intelligent person, because you cannot be an archbishop if you're dominant and educated. So then I met Reverend Haggai and I said, Reverend, you know, support this archbishop because he's organizing seminars for me. And on our first week of campaigning, he wrote um, in our chat room, he wrote, Miss uh, Evangelist Mary Angela. Then I told him, I'm sorry, I'm not an evangelist. But it sells here, you know. They're not, these pastors, they're not going to buy your lecture if you're not going to tell them that you're an evangelist because they don't want, they will not like you to teach. And then I told him, it's okay. Because I know I'm called for this. Just tell them the truth. And then he said, give me one hand. And then, um, I, and then he, the, 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 the title of the group that he made was Mission Work. I said, Reverend, I'm not a missionary. I'm a professional lecturer. And I'm, I am in the marketplace ministry. I know that my gifting is into, um, I'm an apostle and an evangelist and a teacher. I said, I, I believe and I know that I have multiple gifts, gifts, but I'm not called to be the pulpit ministry. Please don't lie because it's a lie. And then he said, just follow me, I'm an archbishop. So at the back of my mind, I was thinking like, yeah, he's an archbishop, that, but that is actually lying. And even in the marketplace ministry, that is an offense in advertising. That's what you call in the marketplace ministry, um, misrepresentation. And that's punishable by law. So I said, Reverend, that's that's misrepresentation. That's lying about me, my credentials. But that sells here. You know what? He said, because he is, has this online, his own. I, I didn't know that archbishops can be called archbishops, even if they only have 30 people in their churches and no one actually ordained them. They just paid money and they were ordained. I didn't know that. And then I and then I, I was thinking like, how come he's thinking that way? If he was really an archbishop, he should trust the Lord, you know? And then I said, did you really ask God that you're going to sell this lecture? Because if you really trust in God, then you will be sure that, that, that people will believe in you. Um, he said, I'm a prophet. Uh, you will become a Catherine Kuhlman. <laughs> 
I said, I know I'm prophetic. Everyone is prophetic, but I'm not really called to be Catherine Kuhlman. I said, maybe in the future. And then after three weeks, he said, um, after three weeks, he said, if you will give me 100 US dollars, I will ordain you as an archbishop. I said, no, I'm not a theology major. I know how to preach because I was, you know, Christian this way. I said, what? 100 US dollars? And then you ordain me as a archbishop? I said, no, I'm not going to mess up my credentials. Because if you're going to make me an archbishop, I have to change all my credentials in LinkedIn, you know, on Facebook, on WhatsApp, on my website. And then I said, and then people would know that I'm not an archbishop. Then that's a lie. And I said, don't, don't you think it's a lie? And then he said, I'm the archbishop, follow me. I said, no, I'm sorry. Here in the UK, we even throw eggs on Prince Charles. I told him that. And then I said, I'm sorry, I think you're not led by the Holy Spirit. Then I said, I'm not going there in August. Return the money of those you collected. Please return the money. I'm not interested in money. I'm interested in real, in, in, in real revival. And I want to work with people with clean heart. So the board of director had decided that your term with me ends in August. That's the August. And then um, I prayed. I said, I want to partner with someone with clean heart because I, I don't like to lie because it confuses me. It confuses me. And then uh, he started calling me evangelist. And people started calling me evangelist. I said, no, I'm so sorry. No, 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 no. I said, I really do my job of evangelism, but I don't have an office in church. You see that? If you meet people like them, disassociate. So now what I do? I call up pastors and I tell them, that man is a liar. <laughs> Disassociate from him. Yes. I'm not I'm not really saying like I am don't publicize it because it's libel. But people that I know, I tell them the name and I tell them disassociate from this organization. It's not even I found out that it's not even registered in Nigeria. He's not even have mercy. So the reason why I trust Reverend Haggai, glory to God, was because um, he was humble. He did not even tell me. He did, no, he doesn't boast. Like, I have a ham, this and that. You know, I just told myself, like, okay, this man's heart is pure. So God, guide us. It's just like that. I just want, he doesn't have a website. He doesn't even boast of whatever. I don't even know how many people he's got in his church. But I know that this, this man has a pure heart. I said, okay, let's do, let's start it. He said, okay, let's start. So we signed the MOA. And here you go. His, his connections are very, very sound. So look at yourself. You're all professional. You're all productive. Because, you know, you attract who you are. You attract who you are. It is so true. So praise the Lord. I don't want to glory. I don't even want to praise Reverend Haggai for his qualities because God is a jealous God. Don't praise me of whatever it is that you've learned. Praise God. So we just all praise God because when all man, you know, puts God first and praises him, then he will, he will bring man, you know, unto him. Mm -hmm. So yes, our purpose here is just to bring man to God. So yes, mm -hmm. thank you so much uh, for listening once again to so Reverend Haggai has plans. Uh, this is the original plan that the other bishop had. So I think he's just going mm -hmm. to multiply this through you. Um, there's a way by which you don't need to pay for the next um, seminar because I'm not, I'm not sure what his plans are. You see, that's just what I do. When I trust people, I just trust them. So just let's just wait until you know he meets with you and he tells you what to do. All right. But uh, I trust this person and glory to God. Number two, the reason why I like this group and I trust you is because you're very professional. No one came to me and told me like, I want to directly partner with you and disregard Reverend Haggai because that's a wrong attitude. I like this group. And it, it never, it, you know, in some of the groups, they tell me directly, like, I want to go direct to you. And... And I, I, I tell them, like, no, uh, please, please honor your leader because you cannot be a leader without following your, your leader. You can't be a good leader. 
Uh, there are some people who, who applied, but I told them, sorry, my spirit does not resonate with you, so I cannot work with you. I, I just need to be very strong in that. Um, so that's it. But with this group, I, I feel so good. Thank you, Lord. I feel so good. So yeah, this is good to go. Uh, we can do, uh, we can multiply ourselves. You know, we have to campaign um, first and then second phase and third phase until we saturate. All right. So thank you so much. Who's next? I think somebody was raising his hand. Oh, I see Reverend Haggai. Reverend Haggai, I was talking about you. Uh, Reverend Haggai, get ready. You're next. Um, for now, let's listen to Dusu Sambo, brother. Go ahead, please. Glory to God. Glory to God Almighty. Um, sincerely, I want to thank God for this seminar. Uh, I am overwhelmed. We lost you. With joy. Mm. And I want to thank God, especially for your life, mm. Sister Angela, and your family. Thank we continue you. to bless you with the exploit oh, of it. I received that. I also want to express my profound gratitude to Reverend Haggai mm. for uh, being a very pragmatic leader. Mm. And also, uh, Dr. Abidan, seriously, they are leaders that I will always emulate their style of leadership. God will bless and keep them. Amen. Uh, I, I learn a lot from the one to this day. Sincerely, uh, this seminar is just like, uh, let me say, is a solution that God has sent through me to my church because we are having We can't hear you. Oh, we will go back to you, brother. Once you've gained back your 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 internet connection, let us. Then first... these leadership issues ah, in my own good, good. how. Uh, Oh, you're out again. Where is he now? Okay, um, Reb, um, brother Dusu Sambo, we will go go back to you. In the meantime, let's hear from Reverend Hagai. Bro, bro, brother Reverend, please speak up. Speak up. Yes, Reverend. I'm back. Ah, oh, you're back. All right. Hello. <laughs> I am back. I am back. Uh, sorry, that's the network from Nigeria. That's the kind of network we are having here in Nigeria. I'm sorry for the hitch. Mm. Uh, like I said, I was ignorant of so many things uh, regarding leadership. But this seminar has opened my eyes. And I am not... I am knowledgeable to do with leadership. You know, I'm every spirit is the best way. And also yesterday I said something that I am going to start with my family, assessing uh, ourselves with my spouse. Uh, with the fruit of the spirit. Every man is a pastor in his house. Like I said, charity begins at home. I will start that. And I have started in earnest. I must say this. I have started. 
and I'm taking it to my church and any other place that I am leading because we need to be accessing ourselves with the fruit of the spirit. And also most overwhelmingly, oh, oh, seriously, the issue of delegation. That is what our leaders here in Nigeria do. They delegate. They don't want to empower. They are afraid to empower. Empower. Overtaking, I know, in life is allowed. One thing they don't know is if you don't empower yourself, another person will empower the person. Yeah. God blesses everyone. Mm. So the best thing for you to multiply, empower. Once you empower, you will multiply and you will achieve greater results in mm. life and in your ministry or whatever, mm. wherever you are leading. Mm. Sincerely, delegation of power is mm. what our leaders here, both in churches and secular leaders, mm. are doing. They delegate, they don't empower. They are scared to empower. So now I'm able to know that empowerment is the best way as a leader. Mm. And another thing, again, is the job of a leader is not to create followers, but to create more leaders. Mm. Wow. wow. I am thrilled by this because uh, our leaders here, even in churches, they are bent at creating followers. They always want to gather crowd, but you find out in the crowd they will gather, there are limited leaders. And before you know it, you will see the growth is uh, depreciating, is going down, is going down. Mm -hmm. There will be no growth mm -hmm. and no future. So, honestly, uh, our leaders have to create more leaders than followers. Mm -hmm. And again, um, I am able to, to learn that from maintenance, moving from maintenance to multiplication, you need to scramble. Once you scramble, then you survive. From survival, you siphon. That is where you have synergy, you synergize. And then significance. Wow, wow. When I look at this, I said, wow, I bless God for being part of this seminar. This has opened my eyes to, to so many things. And then the best influencers that I know, uh, according to this seminar that has taught me, is uh, the best connectors. The best influencers are the best connectors. We need to connect with people so that to multiply. Praise mm. the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So, Glory so to God. A, a person of influence, again, it is not possible to influence people mm. without love. Mm. Amen. So, one needs to love the people to influence them. Honestly, this thing has been lacking in our leaders here in Nigeria. And thank God for this eye-opener, thank God for this uh, seminar. In fact, this seminar is rich, very, very rich. And I assure you that what I learned here will not die in me. And this seminar has exposed some things with our leader. They, were, they, 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 they are greedy with knowledge. They don't want to share their knowledge. That greed is there. Both religious leaders and secular leaders. So that also the lesson for us. And can you run on so that you can create room for others too? All right, all right. I will do that. So I really benefit. Uh,
I love God and I thank most especially you, Sister Angela. May God continue to strengthen you and all the participants that participated. I bless God for your lives and God will continue to keep us together. The bone will not be broken. We will continue to in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you so much for what you uh, for for what you shared. We are all equal. This is one thing. We are all equal, and uh, no one is a boss. We do have some uh, some assignments. You know, we have some assignments to do. Some assignments are bigger than the others, but no one is least. We are all equal. We are all the same. You have a brain. You have a brain. My giftings are different from yours, but no one is lesser than the other. We are all important. Okay, so thank you so much. Um, where is Reverend Hagar? Yeah. Oh my goodness, we wanted to hear from him. He's, he's off again. Oh, he's not there again. All right. Who, Who is not there? Reverend Hagar. Hello, how are you, my dear sister? How is today? Are you there? Hello, oh, can, you hear, can you hear me? <laughs> You're in the dark. Right. So now we have to give the floor to Reverend Haggai, who actually did a lot of work um, uh, uh, this time to make this possible. So Reverend, the floor is yours. Hello. Father in heaven, we are grateful for this very important meeting. We thank you very much for the knowledge that our sister impacted onto us. We pray, oh God, Father, we are going to disseminate all the knowledge according to your will in Jesus' name. We pray, oh God, Father, that you're going to uphold us, you're going to bless us with all kind of blessing that is coming from you. We want to especially, oh God, Father, inaugurate program. The Lord Father, he went to help them to be prosperous. Them to be very rich in both knowledge and wisdom. So the What happened? Oh boy. All right, so who's next now? All right, let's give everybody a chance to speak. So who's next? Who's yes. next? <laughs> well, Reverend Agay. Yes. All right, go ahead. Thank you. 
of you and you are going to grant it unto us. Thank you because we are going to fill the wall up, particularly in Nigeria, we'll be able to teach them through this seminar. Even the seminar that is coming ahead, about 21 uh, close of leaders, we pray, O oh God, Father, that you are going to help us to register so that we will continue. Thank you for understanding. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Reverend Hyman, will you please give me an What are those uh, uh, assignments that you posted on the classroom? Will you please orient us as to, you know, what is it? Let's uh, let's just use uh, about 23 minutes uh, for you orienting us what to do. Yes. Sorry, pardon. Hello? I can't hear you. Hello? What did you say? Give us an orientation as to why you posted those uh, Hello? facts. Hello? You posted facts. Uh, you posted assignments to every one of them here, to some of them rather. Hello? Hello? Assignment of the class. Uh, Assessor Prof. Uh, Abidan, can you help? out and read the assignment on the platform. It's like uh, Reverend Haggai's bandwidth is very bad. Okay. Um, I, I wish uh, uh, Sister Angela would give me the permission to do that. Yes, please. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Now, um, on the on the classroom uh, WhatsApp, uh, I saw Reverend Haggai place um, John Maxwell Leadership National Escorts, I guess, for Nigeria. Um, there, we saw National Coordinator Professor Abidan David Lautor, National Chairman Professor David Dungil Joel. National Secretary Ambassador Adunke Olatunji. Then we have the John Maxwell Leadership State Coordinators in Nigeria. The state so far that we have leadership structure are Plateau State, Sokoto State, Kano State, Ekiti State, Jigawa State, River State, Gombe State, uh, Federal Capital Territory Abuja, Taraba, and Taraba State. So far, these are the people that have been appointed, and he said the, the appointment takes effect with immediate effect from today. And uh, he said, congratulations there. Uh, I think um, further information will be disseminated because uh, I cannot speak the mind of Haggai because he is our uh, African representative. And if he is the African representative, I think hearing it from him will be the best. But I know that these are leaders that have been appointed for now to coordinate all the John Maxwell leadership programs and uh, training seminars that will be coming up for now, henceforth. So I think um, so far, this is what I can say concerning this. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much for that. Uh, let me just clarify. Uh, I was telling you about this, uh, you know, Bishop stuff like that. Um, when, uh, all right, so he, he um, when that happened, I prayed and I 
look for people who for a time I didn't really have formal organizers. So there were bishops. There were already bishops who organized before Reverend Haggai did. So if you happen to bump, you know, elbows with these are just small organizers. If you happen to bump elbows with, you know, and uh, before Reverend Haggai organized, uh, I think I already have like six, you know, but um, I know that uh, the groups that they're bringing in are not very cohesive because they're looking at this as their own business. So they're they're not allowing me to interact help them. We can they just, their, their, their attendees to join the seminar and then they tell their attendees not to communicate with me so i was thinking like okay they're not into they're they're looking at this as business they're not looking at this as a mission they're looking at this so that they can only have an affiliation from the uk not 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 really a from a sincere heart uh, that they'd like change so my prayer now is, okay, God, there has been other, you know, um, all right, let them go, let them go. But what I'm seeing right now is that, oh my goodness, we are recorded. Let's let's remove the recording now. <laughs>